Welcome to Running Rants, episode number five. And for today's discussion, I've got a really good treat for you, as you can tell from the title of the video. But it is how I spent the night for free in Beijing. How it starts was that me and my close friend Max, who I talked about earlier in another episode, we decided to go to Japan. Now this sounds pretty crazy, but truthfully, I have a pretty big history in Japanese. In high school, I went to a magnet school that specialized in Asian arts, and then I also ended up minoring in Japanese when I went to college. So the thought of going to Japan is nothing too outrageous. I actually had gone to Japan maybe twice before that for a few weeks each time. Well, we wanted to go to Japan. We planned it out months in advance, and we picked the date, which was somewhere in October. Now we're excited. Him and I haven't actually gone internationally traveling ever before, but have been friends since the day I was born. So we're going to Japan, ticket spot, and we get our way there. Now the bad news is, is that we actually had a layover in Beijing. So I think you guys might see where this is actually going. Now, when we got to Beijing, there was only like a two hour layover, which sounds like a lot of time, but truthfully, when uh, it's international, it, it kind of flies by. We get there and Beijing airport is ginormous. Not the biggest I've ever seen, but definitely up there is one of them. So we go there and when we're waiting for our flight, there's two stories. We're sitting on the top, but there's actually two floors and on the bottom, it's where everybody is actually waiting and is going to get picked up. Now, I've never really been to an airport like this, so I never even knew this was a thing. When we're waiting there, I thought we'd see like our airplane come or some type of notification over the loudspeaker, which I never personally heard. So we're waiting there and let's see if we can get in here, by the way. Guess that was easy. We're waiting upstairs. I thought we'd see the airplane come and maybe some type of announcement, but we never got that. And if we did, him and I were way too busy charging up my 3DS and some other stuff because our flight to Beijing alone was like 12 hours. We, I think, hear a notification or a loud, uh, loudspeaker announcement saying, this is your last trip. And whatever the case is, it just never clicked with us. We just thought, where's everybody else? They were downstairs. So we go downstairs on the sign. We see, I forget exactly what it says, but pretty much the trolley has already came. The bus has already picked up everybody. There's pretty much nothing you can do. We're a little, little frantic thinking like, hey, is there like another one? Because maybe we can get picked up, brought there, but no, we go around. I'll make this part of the story short. We run around, just couldn't find anything uh, or anybody to really help us. So. As I said, I have a background in Japanese, which helped me out a lot when I'm in Japan. But when I'm not, and we're in Beijing, I really felt completely out of my element. Assumingly what Max felt like when he was in Japan. So no one there, I don't wanna say no one. I feel like English is definitely uh, spoken widely across the entire world. Some places way more than others. In Beijing, people spoke it, but it just wasn't as prominent as I would have thought or wished. So we get there and we're trying to communicate and it just doesn't work. So we find our, uh, the place where we, you know, our, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like our airlines, that's the word. We look for our airlines and we obviously, as me and Max are completely broke people, our tickets were the cheapest ones we could find, hands down, just pretty much. They were still expensive, but the cheapest airlines. So we got China Air. And you're, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, China Air, that's great. No, it's Air China that's really good, I'm pretty sure. And we got the one that's really bad, just to save ourselves a couple hundred bucks. So we get to Air China, whichever the, of the two we got, like I said, was the cheaper one. We actually go to their desk, talk to them, 
the translations are really bad and Japanese and Chinese is very similar if I were to read a menu in in Chinese I'd be able to figure out what the words meant I can see the word maybe pig and realize that it's pork in both Japanese and Chinese though if you were to try to read this word it would sound different in two languages just written the same it's hard to really explain because their alphabet is more of pictures where ours are you know an alphabet that's pretty uh, pretty similar throughout all the uh, you know languages maybe in Europe and whatnot maybe not the same but similar so I can write a little bit of Chinese maybe but speaking at zero we go up to the desk and we're trying to ask them Hello. you know what's up what can we do like <laughs> our flight was to Japan and I'm trying to talk to my friend who is supposed to be picking me up in Japan not too much later maybe a couple hours but listen <laughs> China has so many banned websites it's not even funny and not even the ones that you would think would be banned but don't quote me on this but I remember trying to get into like my Yahoo mail wasn't working I think Google's allowed but even if you do use Google and you try and find a site chances are that might not work so we're using the Wi-Fi we're stuck in a country we don't know with a language we don't know with people supposedly picking us up in another country but no way of really talking to them it was it was complete chaos obviously our phones didn't work there with uh with data so we had to pick up wi-fi that was difficult to find the password we are completely out of our element we finally go up to the desk tell them what's going on and they after a very long process kind of understand where we're from and where we're going and everything along those matters and they actually offer us a free hotel so as the whole video states we got to stay in beijing for the night for free wow. pretty much completely free wow. now we obviously bought food for ourselves and you know looked around but our stay in china was 100 percent free they got us a hotel quite nice from what i remember and they even gave us a shuttle to go there and pick us up in the morning as i said without getting into great detail it was very difficult to communicate and it's just this experience that really brings you away from what you know and just throws you somewhere that is completely foreign to you and i didn't hate that it was definitely eye-opening but it's just something you really have to experience it's hard for me to put into words so they tell us we have our hotel on that uh maybe we need to get picked up here at 10. now it's like seven o'clock so me and max decide to go around considering we're here for the night we contacted my friend from uh, Japan, told him what the problem was, and here we were in Beijing for the night. So we're going around and we asked somebody, or maybe we look it up. I do forget where the closest places to kind of eat, and they're like, oh, down here to the right. So we leave the airport, and it is very, <laughs> I mean, I can't speak of all of China, only Beijing, and only the small part of Beijing, but it was very, the air quality was definitely. Uh, less than than good that was the first thing I noticed but we go there we take one or two rides and we end up on the street lights are everywhere now I've been to Japan before this had like a different feel um, it definitely felt a little more like second world almost not that bad but just the, the first thing that I noticed I'll put it this way is that for maybe every three people there were uh, shopping at these they're mostly just little restaurants with like open doors you go in for every three people i would say that there was one police officer and uh which made you feel safe because there's so many police officers but at the same time it sort of made you feel unsafe because it's like why are there so many cops here and they had you know uh the vests walking everywhere so we go to a couple places and we go into one place i think like the doors are just wide open you go in you see flies not everywhere but it's a little off-putting and it's kind of like a buffet style with all the uh shaving dishes full of stuff and if you go in it's just like i don't even know like a pig's head or just pig's feet like completely something that and i'm pretty open to food and i was just like no nah, i'm okay but we're just kind of looking around then we go to a grocery store and keep in mind i'm not trying to you know shine a bad light on beijing i'm only giving you my experience and hey listen it was all for free so you can't go too wrong with that we go to the supermarket 
pretty nice actually. And you know, we found Lake's potato chips, which I'll put a picture to, that were definitely an interesting flavor. And um, some Mountain Dew that looked very interesting. It was actually really well set up, but we go to the like bread aisle and I just see this, it's definitely not a mouse. I wouldn't say it's like a New York City rat, but sizable rat just like leave the, the aisle. And I'm just like, hey, hey Max, look at that. <laughs> that was pretty off-putting. I mean, I think we still bought a couple things from China. Things were just so cheap. Like I, I'd say almost unbelievably cheap. Um, so that was, that was super good. Ooh, just got a flood warning on my phone. Here we are guys, our story's almost done. So after we go to the grocery store, we go out to get some food outside. Now Max, he's really more of a picky eater and just kind of a, keeps it safe. So I forget what he got, if he got anything out on the street. I played a little more risky. There's this guy with like a little push cart, not much bigger than this. I kind of just go over to him, I'm like, you know, I'm white by the way. Like keep in mind when you travel to Asian countries, most of them, they see that you're white and now you are a foreigner. They know that, they can approach you and sell you stuff, talk to you as such. If you were to be Asian coming to America, you kind of just assume that you are American. Just keep that in mind. So I go over there and I go over to the guy and he starts talking to me about like New York or something. And he's like, oh, are you from New York City, New York? I'm like, no. I was like, I live near there, near there though. His English is very broken. And I'm like, oh, like I'd like some, some street meat pretty much. I'm like, yeah, could I have some street meat? I'm like, is this chicken? He's like, yeah, it's chicken. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, this doesn't really look like chicken. It was kind of like, I'm just kind of curious, I'm like chicken, right? He goes, hmm, chicken. I'm like, okay. So I buy two skewers real long bite into it and I can tell you this right now it was not chicken it was good but it was not chicken I couldn't tell you what it was it definitely was a little tougher than chicken maybe it was a different part of the chicken so I get that so if you got this far definitely smash that like button for eating some street meat over in China not knowing what it was so we get that we go back to our uh, to the airport get some Wi-Fi get our shuttle we go over it was a little difficult getting in there, but uh, getting into our hotel, obviously with a language barrier, go back the next day, hop on the airplane, head to Japan. That was a whole day we spent in Beijing, minus paying for the food. That was completely free. So thank you for the airlines. Like I said, I think it was Air China or China Air. Thank you so much for that. You definitely made it uh, definitely uh, hospitable. Who knows, maybe if I go there again, you guys have a cheap ticket, I definitely buy that. So thank you guys for going on the run with me today. It was definitely a shorter one, if I'm not mistaken. I have to look at my watch. But I got a flood watch warning on my phone. It's a little bit, a little bit cloudy outside, but it's not gonna stop me. So thanks again everybody. Take care. We ran for 14 minutes and 14 seconds for about a mile and a half. Ran a nine minute and 32 second mile. Had 126 average beats per minute. Burned 147 calories and took 2,045 steps. If you guys enjoyed the video, you can check out the playlist right here. Make sure to drop a like if you could. And my most recent video on this side. Thanks.